Summer is here, thank goodness. And that means road trip season. Today, I'm gonna to show you some navigation apps that I've reviewed over the past couple weeks. But first things first, sing-alongs are not included. The wheels on the bus go round. The bus has no brakes. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> choo choo. Over the past couple weeks, I have reviewed three navigation apps. All of them are available for iOS and Android. So, Google has been working on their map service for literally decades. They have been improving it, adding features, everything. And, well, they have continued to do a good job with this app. It works amazingly. Um, it is very reliable. The bike direction, it has bike directions, which a lot of apps don't, even if they're in beta, it's better than a lot of apps. Uh, your notifications can be rooted to your pebbles, so when it says turn left, it can show up on your wrist, which is very good for pebble users like me. Uh, the voice nav is great. It is very reliable, in, in which some other apps aren't. Uh, the design is extremely simple and minimalistic. And uh, the biggest pro, it's free. It costs you nothing. However, there are two cons. The bike directions, since they're in beta, can be dangerous. Uh, I was using it and it suggested me to go on a road that was very wide and, you know, it wasn't really made for bikes. And the other con is it uses a lot of data. So if you don't have a data plan or you have one that, like mine, which is one gig, which I think is equivalent to a sippy cup, or if you have anything less, you might want to get you might want to get a bigger data plan or might want to choose another app that we have here which actually doesn't require data. So in conclusion, I love Google Maps. I think it is great. You should get it and love it. So this app is Garmin's new app. It's called Viago. Viagra. Viagra. No, it's not Viagra. Pretty, might as well be. Well, that's about as useful as it is. Well, so, uh, uh, to be fair, <laughs> pretty so useful. The thing about this app is you can buy maps. You don't need to have any data connection to use this, sir, this app. What you do is you go and buy a map pack and like Call of Duty, except no shooting, you can actually use it without any data. And that's a major pro. And then the other thing is it has urban directions for walking and transit. The cons, there are no bike directions on this. And for a person that is a very avid biker, I find that quite annoying. I actually emailed Garmin about it and they said they are not going to bring that functionality to this app. So it's a little saddening. The voice guidance is horrible. It's supposed to let you know when you're supposed to turn and whatnot. It only worked about half the time, and unlike Google Maps where it actually pronounces the street name, this one just says, turn left, turn right, continue straight for 300 yards. So that's not that good. It is quite expensive. It is $2 to buy the app, and then the urban guidance directions are like $5, and then each map pack for each continent is an additional $10, meaning that you could literally spend almost $100 in this app alone. The design is quite cluttered, I feel. Uh, you can, like, this this on the side here. Who needs to go to attractions? It's like, why would you do this? And uh, the, fir the search functionality is nearly extinct. And what it wants you to do instead is use Google to find the address, and then you type in the address in the app, and then it will poorly navigate, it, navigate you to your destination. So my verdict on the Garmin Viego navigation app is you should not get it. Unless you have an ultimate power supply in your car in which your phone can stay charged all the time, or you don't have a data plan. That's the only circumstances you should get it. However, I would highly recommend you don't do it. So Waze is, I'd say, a medium-aged 
app. It's been around for a little while, but it's, I wouldn't call it brand new either. And actually, one of the previous competitors in this um, showcase showdown of apps actually owns Waze now. Google bought Waze. So, this is technically Google, but yet it is still a different app. So, Waze has many good um, pros. One thing is it can save time. So, not right now, but like there's usually traffic along here. And it will reroute your destination so that you can skip all the heavy traffic spots, collisions, construction, cats dead in the middle of the road, whatever. The voice nav on it is also good, and gas stations also will show up in the app so that you can find the cheapest price of gas for somebody's truck, let's say, Andrew. Anyways. Um, they have cool friend features where you can friend people um, and see their ETAs and live maps. So you can friend these people and set, say that you they're all going to one, direct, one uh, location. You can see who's going to arrive there first and whatnot. So good, let's say, if you're having a dinner party or something. And you can help others with this app by reporting collisions, construction work, other things. The cons is it's car only. There is no transit, bike, whatever. Um, there's this feature called Chit Chat, and I find it kind of weird because it just leaves a bunch of little text bubbles along the road for other users and we don't know what its future might be because Google now owns the app so is it gonna be into Google Maps? Are they gonna keep it two separate? Who knows? My verdict for Waze is that if you drive you should use this app. If you leave yourself in Waze's hands then it will be entirely delightful and you'll save a lot of time and will not be aggravated by traffic. So you might say you won't be in harm's ways. So that concludes the first episode of TechStig Tech Reviews. Like, comment, subscribe, and give us feedback about this show. It is the first episode and we will continue to improve it over time. I'm Dominic Adamowski and keep it true.